Hello, it's a pleasure to be here presenting to you today and a great honor. And I would like to thank you all very much for asking me to present today on how we can empower a new personal data economy. I'm Julian Ranger, the executive president and founder of DigiMe. What I want to talk to you today is about how we can increase the velocity a rich personal data sharing. And I use the term velocity very deliberately because if we think of velocity of money, we talk about GDP, which is the value in the economy. If we can increase the velocity of personal data sharing, then we increase the value to the individual, to businesses, to government and society as a whole. Now we need to do that with full privacy, security, and consent as well. And I will talk about that today. The key, though, is realizing that investment and realization of the new capabilities that we're after, whether that's personalized health, the future of healthcare, whether that's new fintech, the way of working with banks, whether that's retail, IoT, smart cities, means we need more data, more and better data. So what do we mean by more and better data? It's what we would call rich data. So in an ideal world, all data would be single source so that we don't have the problems and errors that come from saying, is that data about Julian? Is it Julian? Is it Julian? Is it Julian? We get it from a single source so that we know that it is accurate about me. We want it to be multidimensional. Health, finance, social, purchases, media, because so few things really only need one set of data. And we need it to be what is called longitudinal or deep in time, sometimes only a month, sometimes three months a year, or the lifetime when it comes to health. And it seems obvious, but we also need it to be accurate. So much data is secondhand or inferred, but we want data that is accurate from source and validated as such. And the final one is a bit complicated, but if we're gonna make it easy to use, increase the velocity, then we need to avoid the problems of all the data coming in its multiple different languages. And we need to normalize it into one form to make it easy to use. So we really need rich data, which is single source, wide, deep, accurate, and normalized. But hold on a moment. Don't we have problems today with privacy, security, and consent? And there's new legislation, you know the one in Europe, the GDPR, but similar legislation worldwide, which is saying you can't take that data without the consent of the individual. Privacy matters. So on the one hand, we want more data. On the other hand, we're constraining the use. But we need more data. Now, the interesting thing is there isn't any company out there that can know everything about you. People often talk about GAFA or the big four in America, but it can apply equally anywhere else in the world. But there is no company that knows all about you, that knows all your finance, all your health, all your social data. And that's a problem because we need to get that data together to be able to share it for the new capabilities that we want. But one key insight, there is one entity in the system that does know everything about me and everything about you. And that is ourselves. You know your data sources. You know where you bank. You know where your health data is, which social channels you use. Also, you, but only you, have full rights of access to that data. 
Only you can know everything about you. And furthermore, you have unlimited usage rights. I can take my health data, print it out, put it on the windows of the car and drive around showing everybody. But nobody else can do that. Therefore, the key is that aggregation of rich data can only occur at the individual. Now, we're here today talking about my data, and it's often posed as a point about privacy, security, and consent. But the real underlying reason for my data is you as the individual are the only place, you are the only person, the only entity that can bring all the data about you together. And that is more important than anything else. So how is that done? Well, because you use a data facilitator or what is called a My Data Operator. My company, DigiMe, is one of those. Now, the nice thing is that when you aggregate rich data at the individual, you get privacy, security, and consent for free. It can only leave the individual with their consent. If the data is at the individual, it's fully private and secure because it's decentralized. But the key to understanding my data is knowing that it solves the problem of aggregating rich data and then making it available. And through that aggregation at the individual, it solves privacy, security, and consent. But it's the aggregation that is the key aspect. So what is a typical data facilitator, a DigiMe? It's very much like an email program. You're very used to downloading an email program to your device, connecting to your two, three, four email channels, authenticating, and then a miracle happens, all of your data is there. Well, DigiMe is the same as a typical data facilitator. You connect to your health data, your banks, your social feeds, etc. You authenticate once, and then your DigiMe extracts a full copy of your data every day. We normalize it. Uh, you may not be aware, but I have a long history in the military internet, and DigiMe contains a lot of the capabilities that came from there, including the ability to normalize all data. And now you have all of your data, but it's too much to store on one phone or and you might want it for multiple devices. So you get to choose where you store it. Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and we're adding, adding other drives as time goes by. It doesn't matter because your DigiMe encrypts all of that data on those drives, personal data stores they're often called, with your own key that is held only on your own device. So your data is fully secure. It's 100% private and it's rich. It's single source, wide, deep, accurate, and normalized. This is marvelous. This is what every business and service in the world wants. So the other half of DigiMe is we contain a full consent stack with APIs or SDKs so that any app or service can ask you for your data just by registering for a consent certificate and that comes up on your phone. And if you say yes, your DigiMe extracts your data and passes it to the Apple service. It is that simple because you now have the best data about you. Why would I as a business want to go somewhere else for poor quality data when I can come to you for rich data? That is what my data achieves. The way we implement it is that it's all on what's called edge processing. It's all done in the individual's processing domain. So DigiMe does not see, touch, or hold your data ever. But you have that data to be able to share with others. And to share, they have to have a value proposition. Now, that doesn't mean to say buying your data. It might be a service be more convenient, or you might get a reward or a combination. It's a value exchange. For example, you might have diabetes. You might want to share some of your medical data or your wearable data 
with a diabetes app. That keeps you alive. That's a very high value proposition and you would share your data for that. But you have to consent with a consent certificate that meets the bar for what is called explicit and informed consent. So it has to be precise, explicit, about a singular purpose. Informed means it has to be easy for you to understand what you are sharing your data for. And that is what our consent certificate does. So let's see this in action. So I'm now playing the video and you can see here the welcome screens for DigiMe, making clear that it is your data, that you have it and you secure it yourself. Here, the individual is choosing to store their data in Dropbox, but it doesn't matter where because it's all encrypted. So Dropbox can't see the data. Now, in this instance, the individual already has their library created. They've already connected to Facebook and Twitter and some bank accounts. And therefore the data is coming straight in and they've already got, as you can see here, a large number of data sources. Here, they're just authorizing Twitter. And it's as easy as just putting in your credentials. And here there's a two factor ID. And now Digime will get that data every day and completely refresh the library and the user will not have to do anything more again for the data, that Twitter data to come through. The data is updated every day. You can see here the Twitter data is being imported for the very first time and the posts are streaming in. And there they are. Now you could close your Digime, not look at it for several days and in the background it's bringing the data. Now we have an app which wants to get your data. The purpose of this app is to be able to help you clean up your past social data. So it explains that, allows you to see what data it wants you to share before you share it. And if you're happy, you swipe to share. That simple for an individual. Now your Digime is extracting the data and passing it straight into this app called TFP. It's importing the data and now giving you the service. So in this instance, the data has now already been passed and 146 posts. And now it's going to locate items for you, which you may want to delete or not, if perhaps they were the wrong type of things that you regret posting, which is what that app does. But the key here is any app can get your data with no more than asking you with a certificate. Very easy to do. So how does that benefit businesses? Well, a business gets orders of magnitude better data than they could ever do before, very, very simply. It's one API that they need to use for many different sources. It allows them a faster time to market and much simpler analytics and data compliance is handled. But most importantly, they have the trust of you, the individual. You know that if they ask you for the data, if they've explained it with a very clear certificate, you are happy then to share it. That is a trusted relationship and you can do so much more with that. So that sounds marvelous. The whole of the My Data concept is a new concept that is going to change the world, but is it real? Is it easy to use as I've tried to indicate that it is? Is it safe? Is it scalable? Will businesses adopt it? Well, we know that there's government legislation all around the world to make this happen. We've got the My Data Global, for which I am very pleased to say that I am a board director. But we've also got major tier one businesses and governments using my data with DigiMe today. And there are lots of other developments coming along. I'll refer you to a big study done last year by a consultancy company, Control Shift in the UK, with the UK government, pointing out that just actually with a moderate implementation of my data 
it would increase the economic value to the UK of 28 billion. In fact, in the EU, the 27 countries of the EU, the estimates were about a 1 trillion euro benefit. That's massive. Can it be done? Well, last year, DigiMe, along with the UK government, Facebook, the BBC, British Telecom, Barclays, a bank, British Gas, did a big infrastructure sandbox to see if each of these businesses shared data with the individual and the individual shared it back with the businesses, did that work? You can read the fact that it did, but the key conclusions are that personal data sharing can be made safe, that you do get valuable services from it, but you need a breadth of data to create that value. You need to do my data fully. And it proved with DigiMe, but it proved that this all does work. It is easy to use, it is easy for businesses, and there is a map a large amount of value. Now, people often ask, well, what is that value? Unfortunately, I don't have time to go through all the different value exchanges that can happen, but I want to highlight a few for you. One of the most interesting is health. Today, it's very difficult in all the nations around the world for me as an individual to see my health data. But if I can't see my health data, if I don't have my health data, how can I have apps to give me personalized medicine? I can't. What happens if I want to move from one place to another and I don't have my health data? That means that the health advice and interventions I'm getting are based upon a partial record. That's not good for me. What about research? We, we want to move to patient-centric care, individual care, medicine that's individual. I need to share my whole health data, my advanced wearables, my genomics, the food I buy and eat, and even my social data because it's an indicator of mental state. I can't do that. But in a my data world, I can. I can get my health data. I have it with me wherever I go. I can share it. I can use apps and I can share it with the research community, making drug development quicker, better, and more effective. This is called patient centricity, and it's enabled by you, the individual, having your health data. There is now a worldwide movement for that. You can see more at the future of patientdata.org. But it's also about convenience with retail, consumer personalization, both in finance and in retail. And we've done a lot of work with MasterCard and with CX Loyalty, a global brand, to show how this enables the future of both retail and finance. There are many things you can do when you have a personal data account, a data facilitator such as DigiMe. And these are some examples from MasterCard who are moving into my data in a big way. The art of the possible means wherever the individual interfaces with a business or with government or with research, then my data with a personal data facilitator like DigiMe enables a far better interaction, a richer, deeper, trusted, private, secure interaction. You can't possibly read all these use cases. We have them on our website, but these are real. There are so many use cases, as I said, wherever you interact with a business. Now, I just wanna finish with a couple of slides the first actually is to indicate the simplicity of this approach. Today, using personal data is terribly complex. How do you source the data? Where do you get it from? Is it accurate? It's not rich. It's poor in many dimensions. You don't have the full picture. 
So you need complex algorithms to extract useful results from that data. It's not really easy to cope with the privacy, the security and the consent. How do you do that when, how do you get consent from an individual when the data came from somewhere else? Very difficult. You need expensive processing to bring this all together. It can cost millions of dollars to do a very simple thing with today's processing. But when you have data intermediaries enabling what we would call human centricity, my data, then the access to data is simple. Just ask the individual. You have rich data. You can have simpler algorithms. When you get really rich data, you don't need complex algorithms to pull out the information you need because it's there already. All of the privacy, security, and the consent is solved. And you can do a lot of the processing on device. You don't even need big complex backend systems. So this is simpler. You can start today. You don't need to spend a year thinking about it. There are two prerequisites for the personal data economy. One, you need data portability. The requirement that individuals are allowed their data preferably with what we would call well-formed APIs. Don't need to form a particular standard. Companies like DigiMe will normalize the data if it's in lots of different standards. But individuals need to be able to log on and get their data. But if an individual has the data, the risk is that unscrupulous companies might ask me for the data. I may not understand and I may disclose too much. So if this economy is going to work safely, then there has to be a requirement for explicit and informed consent. So on the input side, data portability, on the output side, explicit and informed consent. These are two things that are in GDPR and in Europe and enable the economy. But these are the only two things we need to enable this economy to bring this huge economic benefit value for everybody. So you can empower that personal data economy today. Increase the sharing of personal data with full privacy, security and consent by aggregating data at the individual. And that delivers greater value to all individuals, businesses, governments and society as a whole. The world is moving to a decentralized personal data grid. Thank you for listening, and I'll now take questions. Thank you very much indeed. The first question I've got is whether, what were some of the hardest decisions I had to make so far in building DigiMe? Why were they hard? And how did I decide what to do? Um, so there's probably three things I'd, I'd like to highlight in response to that question. The first is timing. Um, if you're the first in any market, it's very hard because you don't know quite when you need to be ready for the market. Um, how quickly should you build? We did make a mistake. We were ready with our DigiMe at the beginning of 2018. And it would be true to say that the market really only started becoming welcoming to this idea in 2019. So we had to spend about two years pushing when the market wasn't quite ready. Now, as it happens, that's quite useful. It enabled us to improve the product, to be able to learn quite a lot. But we made a mistake. We were a little early. Um, if I could do over again, um, I might uh, have delayed things by a year or two. The second hard decision, but absolutely the right decision, was that we made the decision that we would not see, touch or hold data as DigiMe, the company. It would all be at the individual. And that's hard because it means we have to do all the processing as edge processing. I don't have time to explain how we did all that, but effectively we give the individual infinite cloud processing on their device, which enables that to happen. But it was hard to implement and took us a good year extra to be able to make that happen, rather than saying, 
we'll hold the data for you. But if we'd said we'd hold the data for you, we wouldn't have as private or secure a solution as we came with. So we had to make that hard decision. The third is important that if we're a data facilitator for the individual, we have to be neutral. I can't build applications on top of DigiMe, even though I can think of many applications and I could make a lot of money doing that. We have to have patience to allow others to do that. If we are working on behalf of the individual, we can't also be providing the applications that make money out of that data. You have to be neutral. And in fact, the EU is now looking to legislate for that neutrality. That's hard because we can see others earning money on the data and working with the individual. So it's a mutual benefit almost before we are. But we know that in time, that'll all work out for us. So three things, we were a bit early. We made the decision not to see touch or hold data, which was hard, but necessary because it made our life more complex. And we have to be neutral. Um, and so we see others benefit before we do, but over time, that is the right decision. The second question um, I've got is, if I was to start over again, is there anything that I would do differently? Um, that's a, that is in itself a hard question. I've mentioned in answer to the first question, I'd like to perhaps have been ready a year later than I was ready. Um, that would have made my life in funding the company a bit easier. But actually, do you know what? We made some mistakes. We tried a few things. And you could go back and say, I'd like to change those. But if we hadn't made those mistakes, we wouldn't have come up with the answers that now enable our product. So I kind of think the journey had to be what it was, including some of the mistakes we made for us to end up with the product that we've ended up with. We wouldn't have invented the methods that allow, for example, us not to see, touch and hold the data um, if we hadn't have started off down the route we were going. So that's kind of, you have to go through the journey. There's one other thing I would say, um, we did spend quite a bit of time in 2017, 2018, and in the early times of 2019, talking to some of the bigger companies, working with their strategy departments. And we learned that we shouldn't have done that. It sounds wonderful to think, where are we gonna be in three, five years time and try and build a big plan for that with these companies. But you know what? It's so easy to implement. It's so easy to do those first steps and gain an advantage that I wish we had convinced them earlier just to get on and do it, just to start, because it doesn't require millions of dollars to do this. It's not like previous big data processing. And now we have, and we know how to convince companies to start, get moving. Um, I wish we'd known that earlier, um, but that's something, again, that experience had to show us. So the third question I've received is, as a my data operator, are you worried about competition growing from new entrants to the market or do I welcome them? And the answer is I absolutely welcome them. It's a very, very large market and opening up that market is difficult. Getting people to understand the benefits, the simplicity as I've said, and the more people who are my data operators, showing more companies how easy it is, the value in it means that that market will grow more quickly. If the market grows more quickly, that is going to be a benefit to DigiMe. So I absolutely would say we welcome the increase in competition, other my data operators. Now, in fact, Competition is interesting because it isn't always competition. It's uh, There's a horrible English phrase called co-opetition, which is that you cooperate as well as compete. And I think that's very true in this environment. I don't think there'll be many pure data facilitators like DigiMe who just do what we do, data into an individual, data out. 
quite a lot of my data operators are concentrating just on the personal data store. Some are concentrating on a vertical capability. So the competition looks fairly large. I think my data is now uh, validated over 20 my data operators, but that's because the spectrum is fairly large. So I do think in time, in any market, there may be only two or three companies doing something like DigiMe, but there'll be lots of people doing my data. But you know, the biggest single thing that I would say is people like DigiMe, we're just facilitators. We're like the national grid that brings the electricity from the power stations to the home. We help bring the personal data to the home, to the individual. There are millions of appliances that use electricity. And there will be millions of new services that use personal data because of my data operators. So the real point is not how many my data operators there are, but the explosion in new capabilities, new value for individuals, businesses, government and society as a whole that this enables. And I hope um, not only what I've been talking about today, but the other speakers um, at this conference will enable you to see the value that is coming when we can share more personal data from the individual, but with privacy, security, and consent.